So I want to talk a bit now about Nietzsche as a philosopher. And one of the things about Nietzsche is that he was very interested in the form, the, the literary form that philosophy should take. And he tried out various things. So early on, he tried writing quite long essays. Um, he tried writing aphorisms. So I guess what we would think of now as tweets, um, little one or two sentence zingers that would sort of press a whole lot of thought into a couple of sentences. He tried writing poetry. He tried writing piano music. There's um, one of his central works is uh, Thus Spake Zarathustra, in which he kind of adopts a kind of biblical tone. So he, he has a go at writing a kind of um, pastiche of uh, holy scripture. He tries to write a thing that's kind of like a Bible for the future, um, only instead of having Jesus or Abraham as a kind of central character, he has this, this Zarathustra hermit, prophet, wise man who um, sort of walks through that book. And then he goes back to essay writing and finally... Um, he writes in a kind of autobiography. Now, the idea that there should be some kind of deep relationship between what a philosophy is saying and how it says it isn't new. It's there in early modern philosophy. So, for example, if you think about Descartes, Descartes' two major works were the Meditations and the Principles of Philosophy. Meditations is in the form of a diary, more or less, so sort of day one, I did this, day two, I did that. And the principles of philosophy is kind of like an autobiography. You know, when I first went to university, I uh, discovered that they were talking a load of rubbish, and therefore I did this and I did that, and I finally discovered the other. Now, autobiography and a diary are the two forms of writing that go with introspection really, where you write to yourself. You write very much from um, your first-person perspective. And that's what uh, Descartes did in his philosophy, right? He doubts everything until he is alone with his own thoughts uh, so that all he can do is introspect and then he does the, you know, I think, therefore I am and the rest of it and kind of climbs out of that position. But Descartes' philosophy is introspective and so it's appropriate that uh, he adopts the diary and the autobiography as his two literary forms. A little later, you find someone like Spinoza, who uh, tries to write metaphysics in the same form that um, Euclid wrote geometry, right? Sort of, you know, theorem, proof, theorem, proof, that kind of format. Why? Well, because... Um, that literary form of uh, the kind of geometry textbook fits with uh, Spinoza's account of what the world's like and how we ought to investigate it. So it's not a radical new idea that uh, the literary form of a philosophical work should match the content of the philosophy, but uh, Nietzsche thought about this harder than most. And, and one of the things that he um, was trying to uh, get beyond was systematic philosophy, right? So one of the reasons, apart from the headaches, for not writing long books was that um, he didn't really want to write a system of the world, that there's something kind of ludicrous about the, the task that um, Kant or Hegel took on of uh, writing a complete philosophy that tells you the, the logic and the metaphysics and the ethics. Why? Because... We're not in a position to do that. So what's his method? His method, at least in the book we're going to read, The Genealogy of Morals, is genealogical, right? So what's genealogy? Genealogy is where you try and find out about your ancestors. You try and find out who they were. You try and find out um, about your genes, right? One of the things about genealogy is that it almost always disrupts and falsifies people's beliefs about who they really are. So somebody might say, oh, I'm, I'm French, 
I'm pure French. My family has always lived in um, this village. Uh, we've always lived here. We've always been French. And then you do the blood sample and you find that, well, you know, a certain percentage of your blood might be French, but, um, you know, there here's some genetic material from Algeria and there's some genetic material from Russia um, or whatever it is. And almost inevitably, when people do these kinds of blood tests, they find that their, uh, their genetic heritage is much more complicated than they thought and usually involves migration and may well be less noble. People usually imagine themselves to have sort of noble backgrounds, but almost nobody does. Nobody has a pure noble background, right? There's always uh, some liaison between uh, the nobility and some commoner um, back in the family tree somewhere. Well, Nietzsche does this with ideas and institutions, concepts. So we might like to think that the concept of morality, for example, has a kind of a rational origin or you know, it, it, it originates with God or with um, the still small voice within or with rationality. No, says Nietzsche, um, a concept like, like morality originates in the efforts of rather brutal, barbarous people to dominate each other and steal each other's stuff. And it turns out that in order to do that effectively, um, you need to uh, organise, you need to coordinate your efforts. There must be honour amongst thieves, otherwise you can't organise the thieving. And, you know, that rather grubby kind of business is the origin of morality and also of the state. So for Nietzsche, a lot of um, a lot of the stories about origins that we tell in philosophy are what you might think of as stork stories. So you think about you know where do babies come from? Well, if you don't want to give an answer that involves any kind of unpleasantness, anything you'd rather not talk about, anything too animal, anything too painful and bloody, you say well. Um, if two people love each other very much, the stork brings them a present, right? If you think about the story that we tell, um, well, not that we tell, but that um, Locke, for example, tells about the origin of the state, says, well, um, you know, some, some rational, some free rational individuals who love each other very much um, get together and decide to form a commonwealth uh, and they rationally agree to be bound by um, certain rules uh, for each other's mutual but and so on and so forth, right? Um, or you get a similar story in Rousseau, the social contract, right? Or even Hobbes. I mean, Hobbes, Hobbes, there's a bit more cruel and crude reality in Hobbes, but even so, Hobbes tells a story in which people agree to be bound by a sovereign in order to, in order to escape the uh, life in the state of nature. Well, says Nietzsche, this isn't actually how states form. States form by violent and rapacious and um, pillaging sorts of action, right? That's what that's how politics originates. So Nietzsche's um, philosophical method is kind of debunking of stork stories. He also has a kind of debunking kind of tendency in his meta philosophy because he says, look. Philosophers don't write philosophy uh, without interests. You know, philosophers have passions. Philosophers care about stuff. They and they um, they want to succeed as philosophers. So, what do philosophers do? They don't just dispassionately investigate philosophical questions. What philosophers do is try to give philosophical cover and metaphysical comfort for the things that they care about. And we'll see that one of the things that um, Nietzsche thinks philosophers like, because it makes them more powerful as philosophers, is asceticism. That's the idea that we ought to live simply, that we ought to damp down our passions. This is something that he hears about from um, Schopenhauer, right? That a good life is uh, one 
which is away from the rough and tumble and tumult of, of city life, best lived in the desert like a, like a monk. Uh, why are philosophers keen on this, says Nietzsche? Well, these are the conditions on which, under which you can best philosophize. This is a, these are the conditions under which you grow stronger and more powerful as a philosopher. So, of course, philosophers are in favor of this kind of stuff. And in his own autobiography, uh, he talks about, you, know, you should read his autobiography. It's very short. It includes chapters with titles like Why I Am So Clever and Why I Write Such Good Books. And his answers to those questions include things like, well, I was ill. My constitution, the way in which my stomach is connected to my brain, makes a difference to the way I write philosophy. And I was just lucky uh, in that. And I was kind of lucky in my unluck. I was lucky enough to be ill, which meant that I couldn't sit in my professorship and write thick, boring books that didn't go very deep. Um, I had to give all that up, and that forced me to think more deeply. And it forced me to travel, uh, and it forced me to encounter um, the Mediterranean spirit. So another of his dualities is um, Northern and Southern Europe. So that's how uh, Nietzsche um, thought uh, philosophy really works. Okay, so now please read The Greek State, and hopefully you'll see some of this um, genealogical debunking going on in that early text. Mm -hmm.